Hello, my name's Jesse. We're at Beaver Water District today, and we're gonna be discussing what it takes to pull water from Beaver Lake to make it suitable to drink for the customers in our service area. Beaver Water District has three independent water treatment plants that are capable of producing up to 140 million gallons of water a day. On average, we treat around 56 to 57 million gallons a day. We're gonna start off at the raw water split flow box and this is where the water is pumped to from the lake where the raw water pumps deliver it about two and a half miles to this unit. The water is then controlled by all these gates behind me and we can determine how much flow is going to each of the three plants of Beaver Water District by the number of gates that are up or down. From the split flow box, the water is directed to pipelines underground. The building behind me is where the pipeline is bringing the water into the basin seven, eight, and nine. Between the raw water pumps at the lake and the split flow box at the beginning of the plant is the chlorine dioxide facility. We use chlorine dioxide to disinfect the water. It is a strong oxidant that can kill both viruses and bacteria for us. The chlorine dioxide we have switched to just a few years back because it helps reduce our THM or trihalomethanes. And those are a byproduct that are regulated by EPA. And by the switch to chlorine dioxide, we have allowed ourselves to stay in compliance with EPA regulations. The water is delivered to the head of the plant at the flash mix pump. The flash mix pump helps us achieve coagulation. At this point, we are injecting alum, aluminum sulfate, and ferrous sulfate into the water as a coagulant. We want to make sure we're getting adequate flow into the flash mix, and we want to make sure that we're getting enough volume to create the even dispersion of small chemicals into a large volume of water. After the flash mix and coagulation process, the water is directed to the flocculation basin. The flocculation is a slow mixing, whereas the coagulation is rapid mixing. And the slow mixing allows the dirt particles to clump together and begin to form larger particles of what we call flock. The sedimentation basin is used to allow the flock that has been formed to settle out. And the sedimentation gives us a long stretch, about three to four hours on average, of that water to flow in a line and allow the flock material to settle to the bottom of the basin. The settled flock material is pulled from both ends of the basin to the center of the basin. Underneath us right now, there is about a six foot trough that the chain and flight raked the water and the solid material into. Head pressure from the water in the basin is used to drive that settled flock material to our solids handling facility. Once water reaches the end of the sedimentation basin, it flows over a weir into a new pipeline that is then directing the water to the lime box. Lime is delivered to Beaver Water District in powder form. We mix it into a liquid slurry and then feed it to the water, and the lime is used as pH adjustment to help um, corrosion control. As the water flows from the lime box to the filters, we again add a disinfectant, this time in the form of chlorine. This along with source water protection, the chlorine dioxide disinfection, the sedimentation process, and filters are part of what is called the multi-barrier approach. Our aim is to have eliminated all the pathogenic organisms by the time the water reaches the split box at the head of the plant. At Beaver Water District, we have 28 filters. On average, those filters are washed every eight days. The filters remove the small particles that we were not able to remove through the sedimentation process. And the filters are composed of anthracite, sand, and garnet, the material that are removing the small particles that the sedimentation basin did not remove. Below the filter deck, we enter the filter pipe gallery, and the filter pipe gallery is how we distribute water from the filters to different points in the plant. There are the filter effluent, which is delivering clean water to the clear well. Our filter to wastewater used to go through the solids handling facility, and instead of processing it through the solids handling facility, we now pump it back to the head of the plant and use it through the process again. And then on the ceiling, you can see the large pipeline is our filter backwash. And that pipeline is delivering clean water from the clear well back to the bottom of the filter to do the backwashing cycle. 
A lot of times in the summer, the raw water coming in is at two or three NTU, which is fairly clean. But in the spring and the wet season, the rainy season, many times we get turbidity events that are up to three or 400 NTUs. And that is harder to clean and is more expensive to take care of that. But that's what we do best. Behind me is the fluoride building. The water after filtration is piped to this facility where fluoride is added. Fluoride helps aid in tooth health and prevention of tooth decay. Um, it is mandated in the state of Arkansas by an act of the General Assembly. After filtration, the water from the three plants is gathered into one common area called the clear well. The clear well is 20 feet deep and holds 12 million gallons of stored water for us. From the clear well, we can pump to the four customer cities for Beaver Water District, which are Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, and Bentonville. So the high service pumps vary in size from 300 horsepower to 1,000 horsepower, and they also deliver different amounts of water, anywhere from about 3,600 gallons a minute to 10,700 gallons per minute. Um, due to the different distances the cities are and elevations that they are from Beaver Water District, the pumps don't have to be the same size to deliver the same amount of water. Uh, Springdale's largest pump is actually has less horsepower to get the same amount of water to Springdale as a larger horsepower pump does to Fayetteville. The generators at Beaver Water District serve two purposes. The first being that if we should have a commercial power failure, we have backup power that will keep the treatment process going and also allows us to keep the pumps going to the cities so that they get a continuous flow of water. At Beaver Water District, we have five generators, each capable of producing two megawatts for a total of 10 megawatts of power. The second purpose for our generators is to help us during the summer months with load shedding. And when we shave our electrical demand during those summer months and we get off commercial power, then we save on our electric bill and it allows us to pass those savings along to our customers. The water treatment process produces two waste streams. The first being the basin blowdown so when we blow a basin down to get rid of that settled material, it is delivered to this split box. And from this box, we can direct it to our two thickeners. And the thickeners use polymer and then gravity to make the settled material even thicker and more usable in our centrifuge machines. The other waste stream that is produced here at Beaver Water District is the process of backwashing our filters. Uh, when we backwash the filters, that dirty water has to go somewhere. Behind me is the filter to waste recovery basin. Our filter to waste water used to go through the solids handling facility, but we recently built this basin and it's used to capture water that as you can see is relatively clean and safe. And instead of processing it through the solids handling facility, we now pump it back to the head of the plant and use it through the process again. And it saves us in pumping cost and also reduces the volume of water that we are sending back to Beaver Lake every day. People that are in the water industry are hard workers who take pride in what they do and a lot of what they do goes unnoticed and without a lot of appreciation but they dig in every day and, and get the job done.